All right, what's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? Today, I'm gonna be doing a little site analysis of this piece of land here in the foothills of the Sierras out near Railroad Flat, if anybody knows where that is. Uh, just about Central California over here on the western slope of the Sierras. Uh, pretty high elevation here. We're about between 2,000, 3,000 feet. And uh, piece of land here is on the top of a hill and slopes down. It's directly adjacent to BLM land. It's about 18 acres. And uh, we are in, what is it, August 13th today. So the height of summer and very little rainfall. There was a rain about two weeks ago. Maybe it was a week ago, I guess, or something. But a very rare occurrence here in the summer. So uh, what we're gonna be looking for today is showing you how to analyze some of the um, land here and see how you can bring some more vitality back to the land through certain earthworks. We got goats in the background right there. Uh, so the goal here is to see how the water flows, see how different nutrients flow through the land and how we can bring some more vitality back here, um, starting with water retention uh, and then planting with that. And then look at some of the wildfire mitigation strategies because this is a high wildfire prone area and uh, there's some different plants that grow here and different arrangement of the plants and that's something to talk about. Oh, those goats are pretty loud right now. So I'll flip the camera around, show you what I'm looking at and uh, give a little analysis for this. Okay, so here it's going downhill down the road. Uh, this is the road that comes up the property. Kind of a swivel around here. Uh, that's the road that's going back up and those are the goats over there. So um, here's the wooded area over here we're in uh we got pines there's some oaks um don't see any cedars right here these are manzanitas these are uh, generally a pioneer species they're dryland species around here um, high fire prone plants and uh something that people strongly consider something that should be cleared not necessarily entirely but something to be wary of because they can be a fire ladder for fire coming up off the ground up here jumps up here into this low canopy of this oak and then that oak jumps up into the higher canopy of the pines so right here you got a classic case of a dangerous fire scenario so what you'd want to do here a few different strategies first you have the oak um, very close proximity to a much older pine so something you could do is you could take that oak out and you can give a little fire gap between the manzanita and that. Um, you got several trees right here. You got multiple oaks. Um, those could definitely be thinned out. There's not really need for that many oaks to be there. Um, there is a canopy space right here that should be taken up by a tree or can be taken up by a tree. So you could do some selective thinning. You've got over here, you know, more oaks, a little baby pine coming up right here. There's definitely some thinning that can happen because you got a lot of young trees here pulling up a lot of water and they're at risk for um, fire spreading up to the higher canopy. So I'll take you down here. You see a heavy slope. So it's midsummer. We don't really have any water on site currently. So what you want to do is you want to look at where the water would travel in the rain event in the winter. Right here we've got a little sort of gutter that's going along the road that's going to clearly take a bunch of water going down this way um, so this is a good sort of sight path to see how the water collects along the road and is taken to a different area so we want to follow that and know that that's where a bunch of water is going to come out so down here is kind of like this big old meadow that's mowed so not much trees down here but what i have heard from the, the property owner is that we get a bunch of water collection here. It's a super clay soil. So it gets really muddy down here and creates kind of a mud pit in the winter. It can be hard to get cars through. So we got water coming through this ditch right here, collecting all out here. We got some erosion, we got some rocks some gravel, clearly water coming through here. And then we go over here and tough to see the slope here on the camera possibly, but there's a big old sort of gully that comes down here, a little valley sort of effect and that's coming down from the big slope of the blm down there so you can imagine there's going to be some pretty pretty thick running water coming through there so my idea is 
when we come up in here, it's got some pretty thick vegetation already, which tells you that there is a lot of moisture here at some certain time of the year. I did a little bit of clearing in here yesterday, but you can definitely see there's water coming down here. So something we can do is check dams. So this isn't, this isn't a key point. The key point is going to be back there where the slope goes from high slope to then flattens out. So it goes from convex to then concave. So the bottom of the S and that's going to be where our key point is. But up here, we got water traveling down. We've already got vegetation, but in order to prevent a bunch of erosion, a bunch of stuff coming down here and huge runoff of a bunch of water, we can put little check dams, which are little like rock walls or little, we can lay down trees in a horizontal axis and we can just slow down the water a little bit and that'll allow it to seep in a little bit more, hold in, keep some of the silt and all this you know, organic matter in place a little bit and have multiple check dams as it comes down. So it'll percolate into the ground here, keep these trees much healthier. And uh, there's definitely some thinning out that can be done in here. This is definitely a dense area that is fire prone as well. So we'd probably uh, want to get some goats grazing in here, put some check dams in, uh, make sure we start at the top so the water's coming out slower and then progressively put more and more check dams as we go. And uh, that'll be a good strategy for slowing down the water, prevent less flooding come down here. And then as we walk over this way, I talked about that key point. So this water, there's Bonnie, great dog, current mother of six or seven puppies. Water's gonna come down here. This ditch is gonna come down right here. And this area right here is our key point. So that's the area where all the water is gonna collect and hold for a little bit longer before it drips down even further downhill. So what I'm thinking is an ideal setup here. The water basically tells you where you want to pond, which is pretty great. So I'm thinking there's room for a big old pond right here. The road does come here, so you might have to plan around that. You could create another sort of path for the road, but the road goes right exactly where you'd want a pond to be. So you want the pond collection right there. And what's great about that pond site, not only is all the water collecting naturally and gravitationally being pulled into that area, but the second factor is you've got this area over here, which is a garden space where they're growing a bunch of annual crops, corn, beans, squash, melons, all the like. Gonna be alliums this coming year, some cover crops as well. So that is almost on contour what with what this possible pond could be. So either you set the pond a little bit higher, kind of basically <clears throat> right where the the water comes out through that slope down from the BLM, you put a pond right there, which is quite possible. And then you can gravity feed water directly into this as your irrigation. So instead of having to use an electric pump, you can just bring water over here through tubing through uh, <clears throat> at a higher point in the pond so it comes down and it's gravity fed. That's one option. Um, <clears throat> another thing, you could just have the pond down here and what it'll do is it'll slowly seep water out here and you could have a, a spillway going over here and then you could have several sort of contoured swales right here that'll slowly percolate the water that overspills from the pond and have a little like orchard system right here. So it slowly spills this way. And then before it reaches the road, it's seeped down into the ground underneath. So you got trees that are gonna be uptaking that. And you got a lot of sun exposure here. This big old open sky right here. So lots of opportunities for there. Um, another thing, <clears throat> um, he was talking about having this being grazing land for animals. So it's got a big old sort of meadow of sorts here. Um, and if you wanted to graze this, currently it's got a bunch of California poppy, uh, it's got some star thistle, um, it's got clover, uh, this other plant I'm not familiar with exactly, but with the white flowers there, sort of a tarry resinous plant. Um, but it's very compacted soil, and it's just been mowed over year, and year after year. Something you could do is you could do key lines on this. So you've got little micro ridges, little micro bumps here, and you could key line it so it takes the moisture you just rip through the soil about every few feet or so you get a plow and you rip through about uh, 12 inches deep or so and you create these little lines these subsoil lines that take water from the valleys the low points sort of slightly diagonal to the contour and they gradually drain water up into the ridges and what that would do is it would bring water 
to the drier points and it would also bring moisture into those little troughs and create more topsoil from the compacted subsoil. So it takes compacted land and makes it more fertile and so the grasses would grow better, um, you'd have more fertility and if you were going to graze this area you would get a lot more growth and a lot more fodder, a lot more food for the animals to graze on. So that's another idea. And lastly, something I'll take you over here to look at. Uh, here's the nice early garden. This is the first year they're growing on here. Uh, we laid a bunch of irrigation tubes and everything. First year, very little men, but there's been two fish emulsion sprays. And yet these things are growing pretty well. Um, this corn was planted just about a month ago or so. Um, and they got melons growing back there. But um, very early on, not super abundant growth yet, but first season, so. Something else I was looking at, I was looking for potential sites for swales. Um, so swales are a tree growing system through water harvesting, keeping it in the land and it slowly infiltrates down into the soil and helps with the root establishment and keeps water on the site for longer, which is what you want. So I come over here, this big old brush pile. I assume that's gonna be a burn pile. I don't know what it's gonna be. Maybe I'm gonna put it into a pit for biochar. So I walked this way, coming up here towards this little um, makeshift road. And I noticed there's this berm already sort of here, this swale. So here's the, here's the little like drive pathway that leads way up there. Kind of like a primitive road of sorts, but down here, there's already sort of a swale. I'm not sure what produced it, if it was made or what, but this right here is a little sort of area where there's there's a little U-shaped slope right here. It comes down, it's tough to see exactly over here, but um, I'll get a little tough from this angle. It's, there's a little bit of a curvature here. Anyhow, it was basically designed for, for berms and swales already here. So my concept is you've got this large hill, not too extreme of a slope, but definitely a slope. And you got water coming down here and you don't want to build berms on too high of a slope. So what's nice about this exact spot is the water comes down super fast off this hillside. It's collecting down from the house, it's collecting down from the goat pen. It's an area where there's very little water usage so far and it's basically just going to drain down and that's the property line you can see some good grasses going down there and definitely thick trees and young trees coming up so the moisture is collecting down there and creating sort of like a little meadow effect where water lingers for a little bit longer so we want to hold the water on this side of the property so we can grow stuff over here so this is a prime spot to build swales and berms on contour so you can imagine multiple lines of swales coming right here at 90 degree angle to the slope and we dig them out and this whole area right here could become an orchard and what's great about this is that it's right next to the garden so if you were to plant a bunch of fruit trees apples pears figs peaches um walnuts there's probably some other options you could do around around here at this high elevation um, but you plant them directly adjacent to the garden so you got a bunch of flowers from the trees and you got flowers in the garden. What you'll get is more pollinators. You'll get more species diversity in close proximity. You'll get water retention. So these things stay green and it helps with the insects being able to travel between the two. So in different plants, the trees are flowering at different times in the season. The annuals are flowering at different times in the season. You might not even get your annuals to flower certain kinds because you want to get them before they go to flower certain kinds, but it's great for proximity. We get water retention coming off the slope. You get it before it leaves the property. It's really not being used for much down there. It'll still get moisture down there and you'll have a spillway on your berms. And it's a fair enough slope for it. So it's about as simple as that. And then you, you can dig it by hand, dig them with the tool, machinery, whatever's easiest for you. And uh, get full sun right here. So, so that is my analysis. So far of what I've seen on this land, um, in recap, you got a large slope coming down with some check dams that are possible to slow down the water for infiltration right there. And then you have a possibility for a pond right there, either at a higher point in the land, so it can be fed through gravity into the garden, 
or you can do it at a lower point or you can do multiple ponds. Um, and then you can also do key lining on the gradual slope over there where you're gonna have grazing or you could do more swales out there, but that's more for trees. But if you wanna have trees in your grazing, you could do that as well. And then right over here, um, you can have more swales on contour with berms and have fruit trees and nut trees planted and have it directly adjacent to the garden. So a few different options. These will keep moisture on the land for longer periods of time and you'll be able to grow more food. And as far as wildfire mitigation, showed that a little bit. It's kind of a matter of thinning out certain things, keeping the older trees, keeping diversity going, but not having things that are gonna create a fire ladder up to your high tree canopy. So you wanna protect the older growth and um, thin it out, but keep the different species in different little guilds. So hope you enjoyed watching this. Hope it was a little informative. These are just some of the things I've noticed while house sitting here and working on this land for a little bit recently. So um, thanks for watching. If you enjoy, feel free to subscribe and uh, hope to make some more videos soon. All right, thanks, have a good one.